What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to build this color changing number guessing game with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to build this color changing number guessing game. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, so like I said, in this video, we're gonna build this fun little number guessing game. And this is a very basic app. We're just guessing a number between one and 10, no big deal. But it has a little bit of a twist. When we pick a number, if it's close, it gets hotter, right? Closer, red. If it's further away, ah, oh, correct. Uh, we can pick a new number. Let's try this. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. It turns blue the farther we are. So if you're cooler, it goes bluish, right? The closer you get, the darker it gets. Hey, now we're halfway there. We click six. Okay, uh, getting warmer, a little warmer, a little warmer, a little warmer. And I guess this one was 10, correct. So that's what we're going to build out in this video, you know, a simple little app, but a little bit fun. So I've got a file called guest.py, our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So the first thing we need to do is import our random library because we need to generate a, a random number. And we've used random numbers lots of times in this playlist. Check the link in the comment section below for the playlist for this Kinter series. You can also find a link to the code there as well. So to do this, we just go from random import rand int. So we don't just want random, we want rand int, which stands for random integer, which allows us to get random whole numbers, one, eight, 12, 400, right? So integers. So, okay, random comes with Python, so we don't have to install this, we just have to import it right there. So, all right, let's start out building just sort of the frame of this thing. I'm gonna call, let's create a label, I'm gonna call this num label, and this is gonna be a label, we wanna put it in root. And let's make the text equal, pick a number. And I wanna put this on a separate line, so we'll do a line break between one and 10, right? And let's give this a font equals, and we could use Helvetica like we usually do, but this time I'm gonna use that brush script MT we looked at a couple of videos ago, just, you know, for fun. It's, it's the holidays. <laughs> All right, so then we're good to go there. Now let's num underscore label dot pack this and give this a pad Y of like 20, just to push down the screen a little bit. Now we also want an entry box. So I'm gonna call this guess box so that we can actually type in our guess, right? And this is gonna be an entry box. We wanna put it in root and let's give this a font equals. And for this, I am just gonna use regular old Helvetica. But let's make it really big, like a hundred. And let's also set the width to two. All right, we only want to be able to type in two things, so we'll just put the width at two, so that will be good. So, all right, now let's guess underscore box dot pack this guy, and let's give this a pad Y of 20, just push it down the screen a little bit. And we also need a guess underscore button. So once we guess, we need to be able to click a button to, you know, submit our guess. And this is gonna be a button. We wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal, I don't know, submit, something like that. And let's give this a command of guess number or guesser, <laughs> all right. So let's go guess underscore button dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. And okay, so that should be good. We also probably want another button to reset the game to get a new random number. So let's call this rand underscore button. And this is gonna be a button. We wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal, uh, I don't know, new number, right? And let's give this a command of rando to, to uh, run that function. Now this guesser function and this rando function, obviously we haven't built those out yet. We'll do that in just a second. But for now, let's go rand underscore button dot pack and give this a pad Y of also 20 to push it down the screen a little bit more. So, okay, now I'm gonna leave this here and give us some space and do our functions right here. And I'll show you why in a little bit mostly just because I want this up here at the beginning of the program when it starts. Uh, and I'll tell you why in just a second, it has to do with generating a new random number. But for now, let's just go define guesser and pass 
And we also want to define rando and pass. And this guesser and rando just correspond with our guesser and rando buttons. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that's looking okay. So head over to our terminal and let's go Python guess.py. And when we do, we see pick a number between one and 10. We can submit and get a new number. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Again, we don't really care what this looks like. This is just a you know basic shell, so we have something, but it looks pretty good anyway. So, okay, so now let's start out, let's see, let's start out generating the random number. So let's create a variable called num, and this is gonna be a rand int between one and 10. And really that's all we have to do to, for that. Now, if we're clicking this button, it means we're starting over. So we probably wanna clear our guest box while we're at it. So let's clear the guest, the guest box. And so let's go guest.box.delete. And we wanna delete between zero and end. So, okay. And I want this number to be used everywhere. So let's just go ahead and make this a global variable, global num. Some people don't like to do that. I don't have a problem with it at all. So, okay. Now we want this to run whenever the program starts. So down here, right above our main loop, let me just, uh, generate a random number on start. So as soon as the program starts, boom, it's gonna call this function and it's gonna grab this number. Okay, so let's head over to our guesser now. Let's start doing some basic guessing work here. And the first thing we wanna say is, hey, are we actually typing in a number? Because you could type in your name into that, that box, right? So we wanna make sure this is a number. So Let's go if, and let's get whatever's in our guess box. So guess underscore box dot get, if that number dot is digit. And the is digit function will just check to see if there's digits in, in whatever you typed, right? So if there's no digits, this will return false. Uh, but if it doesn't, it will return true, and then we'll continue on. But for now, let's say pass, and let's knock out the else of this. So else, what do we want to happen if we didn't type in something there? Well, we've got this num label here, and it's one of the reasons why we put it up here above these functions. And we could say num label dot config, and let's set the text equal to, hey, that's not a number, right? So otherwise, let's make sure that we put whatever was in here um, in that label otherwise, right? So if we, if we type in the letter J, it'll say, hey, that's number, not a number. If we then click it a second time, it will change that back to pick a number between one and 10, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it to make sure that worked. I don't see why I wouldn't. So let's say uh, J. Submit, hey, that's not a number. Oh, it also says J there. So maybe we wanna delete whatever's in there as well. So let's go guess underscore box dot delete. And we wanna delete from zero to end. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. Make sure that worked. Very complicated stuff we're doing here. So H this time, boom, hey, that's number, not a number. Our H disappears. Now, if we type four this time and click submit, it says pick a number between one and 10 again and it got rid of that little error message. So, okay, looking good there. Also, do we want to delete this as soon as we click submit? Maybe, so keep that in mind, we, we might do that. But first, let's get down to actually uh, doing some logic here in our true statement here. So if this is a digit, if it's true, then what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna change that back to pick a number if it's been switched otherwise. And then let me just comment this, reset, our label. And let me just comment here, delete entry and throw error message. Okay. So here we need to find first off, is the number the correct number? And if not, how far away are we? So let's find out how far away our pick was from the actual number. Right, so how would we do that? Well, I'm gonna create a variable called diff, the difference, and this is gonna be num, which is our random number down here, remember? So this is the actual number that's picked, minus 
whatever our guess is, guess underscore box dot get, right? But we also wanna really make sure this is an integer. So I'm gonna wrap this in an integer function. Now, we need to probably get the absolute value of this number. So if it's like, if the random number is five, and let's say we guessed seven, five minus seven is negative two, right? So instead of a negative number, let's just work with whole number. So we can use the absolute value function, ABS, to convert that negative two into a positive two. And you'll see why that sort of makes sense in a minute when we start doing color stuff, right? So, okay, this will give us the difference and we'll use this in a minute. But for now, let's check to see if correct, right? So let's go if the integer of our guess, guess underscore box dot get, and that's a function. If that equals num, then let's go num underscore label dot config and let's set the text equal to correct, right? L if, now let's start to think about the numbers here. So if let's say the number is one and we picked 10, the difference between that is nine, right? That's a lot. You're very cold, right? If you pick nine, that would be eight away. Oh, you're a little warmer. If you pick seven, you're six away. Okay, a little warmer. The closer you get, the hotter you're getting, right? The closer you're getting. And we're gonna represent that with red. The colder away we are, we're gonna represent that with shades of blue. And since we're doing between one and 10 here, let's set the cutoff at five, right? So anything below five, we're warm, anything above five and we're cold, right? So, but five is sort of neutral. So what color should five be? I'm just gonna leave, I'm gonna make five white, right? Just, just because. So let's say if the diff equals five, then let's just say white. L if the diff is, let's say less than five, then we want red because that's, we're, we're close, we're getting warmer, right? Else, that means we're greater than five, right? Then let's say blue, right? So here's our basic logic. If it's five, we want the out, we want the, the background color of the app to be white. If it's less than five, we want some shade of red. Otherwise it's greater than five. We could put an L if, we could say if greater than five, but we could just do an else then it's some shade of blue. So, all right, let's knock out the white first. So I'm gonna set BC to equal just white. So let's say set background color to white. And then down here outside of our loop, let's root.config our app and let's set the background color BG to BC, whatever this BC is. And we'll do a BC here and a BC there as well, okay? So how do we figure out these other BCs? So BC equals and BC equals. Well, we're gonna use an F string and our fun little, remember our hex color codes we've talked about in past videos. You can check the playlist for links uh, to videos about color, but a hex color code is basically a hashtag and six digits. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And so these can be letters like FF11111, or one, 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 or, you know, uh, C, D, two, three, four, six, whatever. These are, there's six things that make this up. Well, for red, the hex for red often starts with FF. So we don't really need to know, but the first two digits, let's call them of the hex are red, the second two are green, and the third two are blue, two, four, six, right? So. FF is the hardest, darkest of anything. So we're gonna say, hey, do the darkest of this, of red. What else do we want? Well, let's just put the difference four times. So two, three, four. So let's imagine the number we picked, let's imagine that random number is two. Let's say we guessed five, right? The difference is three. So this will be FF three, 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 three. Now I whipped up a really quick, chart here. So this is just a basic color thing. So this is FF1111. This is FF2222. This is FF3333, FF4444, 5555, etc. So as the number gets bigger, the number, the uh, shade of this color gets less, right? So just by doing it like this, we can change the color sort of 
implicitly. Same thing with blue. As the number gets bigger, this color gets less. So if this is confusing, I don't know, just roll with it. It's not terribly important. We're just kind of messing around here, but that's how I did it. Now for blue, it is, remember the first is red. The first two are red. The second two are green and the third two are blue. So here we want the last two to be FF. And instead we want the first four to be diff, 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 diff. Okay. So, okay. I think maybe that should do the trick. So let's go ahead and save this and run this guy and see how badly we messed that up. So pick a number between one and 10. Let's pick one. All right. So that is a blue. That's fairly far away. If we pick two, it's a little darker. Three, we're getting warmer. Four, oh, that's neutral. Four is white. So that must mean we're five away. So I'm guessing the number is nine, but let's walk through it just to make sure. So five, okay, it's a light, light red. We're getting warmer. Six, okay, even darker. Getting warmer. Seven, getting warmer. Eight, getting warmer. Nine, correct. Woohoo. Okay, so that looks good. Looks like we got an error here because of BC something or other. We'll play with that. Uh, but looking good. So now you'll notice that this correct and in fact anything is different colored background. So we might want to change that background real quick. So maybe right here, let's say uh, change the background of the app. And here, let's say change background of the label. Right, so we can go num underscore label dot config and set the BG equal to BC. And to fix that error, let's come up here and let's say BC equals, we can do system button face. This is just the default color, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and save that. And also let me copy this. Whenever we click the random button, right, to start over, Let's also change the colors back to normal. So here we could go number underscore label dot config and set the BG equal to system button face. We can also go root dot config and set the BG of our main app neck back to system button face as well. So, okay, let's go ahead and save that and run it. See how that looks. So let's say one. Oh, getting close already. Two, three, four. Ah, correct. And you'll notice everything turn, turned back to a different color. So, okay, cool. Uh, we can click a new color, a new number. Oh, and when we do, we need to change this back as well. So, okay, one more thing to do in our rando. So I'm just going to come up here and copy this. And in our rando reset label here. So this is num underscore. Well, actually we could just do it right here where we num label config the BG. We can also just set the text equal to that. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it and make sure that looks okay. So let's say three, submit. Whoa, <laughs> okay. And then Let's try this again for submit. Okay, now we try a new number. Okay, everything goes back. Okay, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, it's gonna be 10. Correct. Okay, so I, that's pretty much it. So very, very simple app, but um, you know, it's the holidays, it's almost New Year's, so we're not working too hard here in the office, and this is kind of fun. And changing these colors is a you know very hacky way to do that. There's almost certainly a better way to do that. But uh, let's see, where is that at? <laughs> sort of hacking these hex color codes was just the first thing that came to my mind. I thought, oh, that's kind of fun. And so uh, that's what we did. Just remember that as the numbers get bigger, the shade gets a little lighter for this particular set. Same thing here with the blues. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.